The Lion King is one of the only Disney films to date with close to no references to the existence of human beings. There's no trash on the Serengeti, no airplanes flying over, no fear of poachers, no animals in hats, or walking on hind legs. There's language and imagery that is used from our world, but for the most part, the Pride Lands feels completely removed from mankind. And today, I'm going to explore why that is. Why there are no humans in The Lion King. Hello, I'm Isaac from Watso Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. On my channel, I focus on spreading magic by examining Disney films, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. Also, to check out the films and resources I use to make this video, you can find the links in the description. While The Lion King may not feature many ties to human civilization, it appears from expanded works that they do exist in this world. The continuation of the lions are linked with the decisions that will be made by mankind. And this is an idea really explored by Simba in the Epcot show, Circle of Life, an environmental fable. I think I'd better tell you a story about another creature who's a lot like you. Humans. We are nothing like them. And the TV show, The Lion King's Timon and Pumbaa, feature the duo traveling the world and interacting with other animals in human cities like Las Vegas, Paris, and Hollywood, making it seem like the human world does endure outside of the lion's realm. But the tale of Simba reclaiming his throne isn't one with human involvement. The Pride Lands are a place that are completely separated from the rest of the world, even though that's not the case on Earth. Everything and everyone is connected in the great circle of life, and this holds true for the interactions between mankind and the prides of Africa. Since the 1960s, the world has lost at least 70% of lions of the world, while even just a few thousand years ago, they roamed most of Europe, Asia, and the Americas. What's causing this decrease in the number of lions in the world is tied with the declining size of their habitat and their deaths by humans. While some of the deaths of lions are caused by big game hunters, many are caused by populations of humans whose homes intersect with lions, which leads individuals to fear for the lives of themselves, their families, and their livestock. When the animals that are meant to sustain people are being taken away, those people take measures to protect their interests, which leads to the poisoning and shooting of lions. The International Union of Conservation for Nature has determined the populations of African lions is currently trending downward and is estimated as of posting this video to be around 23 to 39,000 mature individuals left due to habitat loss and the encroachment of people. Asiatic lions are even in a more perilous position as they are currently endangered and estimates state there are likely only about 350 of them in existence. In the story of Simba in The Lion King though, there aren't really influences by humans or even acknowledgements of their existence. But while The Lion King may not have any overt references to mankind, there are a few subtle nods. Zazu has an understanding of the continent he exists within. Out of service, out of Africa, I wouldn't hang about. And he also knows some catchy tunes, including one popularized in the Disney parks. It's a small world after all. No, no, anything but that. And of course, on top of all that, Pumbaa has an understanding of cosmic entities. I always thought they were balls of gas burning billions of miles away. This hints again that humans likely exist far away from the Pride Lands in some capacity, but beyond some moments where these animals allude to humanity and our society, they live in a land devoid of mankind's interference or influence. Humans are not providing a world for the lions to live within like how they did in A Bug's Life. They aren't acting in an antagonistic role like in Bambi, and they aren't assisting in the journey in any way like in Ratatouille. Lions in our world are and have been affected by the lives of humans living amongst them. But depicting how humans are altering the lives of lions is an idea that isn't the focus of the Lion King story, and this wasn't a typical decision in a Disney film. Often the relationship between human and non-human characters is critical to either understanding a Disney film's setup, plot, characters, or message, especially in Pixar films. 
In these types of stories like Finding Nemo, Monsters Inc., Aristocats, or Jungle Book, we witness how humans can be perceived by others, and we see consciousness and humanity permeate into those animal-like creatures. When species are introduced that are not human, they typically play an intelligent role in the narrative, but again, they rarely exist without humans feeling present. Typically, Disney and Pixar movies will have animals that are domesticated and living with humans, like in Lady and the Tramp or 101 Dalmatians. Or they will become anthropomorphic, meaning they gain a lot of the characteristics associated to being a human, like in The Rescuers. And sometimes they will be taken to the extreme where humans do not even exist, like in Zootopia. But even when humans are completely absent in these chicken little fantasy worlds, the animals behave and live like humans. And that's not the case for The Lion King. At a time in Disney history now referred to as the Disney Renaissance, the Walt Disney Animation teams were experiencing a wealth of creativity and success. The era began with The Little Mermaid in 1989 and built momentum with films like Beauty and the Beast in 1991 and Aladdin in 1992, so there was a great deal of pressure going into the creation of The Lion King. Even though the studio was finally soaring in the hearts of millions again, Don Hahn, the producer of The Lion King, explained in an interview that the studio was trying to manage expectations all the time. He stated in an interview, Disney was saying, listen guys, we don't have to hit these high numbers. A movie will never hit $200 million again like Aladdin did, so don't try. Try to make a good quality movie. To create The Lion King, the creators were going after just that, a new high quality story experience but they were going to do so by treading new ground. Don further explains, on The Lion King, we were always referred to as the B-movie because it was a great risk. Doing a movie about Africa, doing a movie with no humans, a movie with Elton John, who hadn't really written a musical before, it was seen as an experiment, a branch out into new territory. We knew we had to try a few things. While the team behind The Lion King was aware that the lives of lions were connected to humans and that there was a precedent to include people into Disney films in some way, they deliberately withheld that element from the movie just as they altered other aspects of the formula that had been established so they could tell the story they wanted to share. They were going to tell the tale of a lion facing who he was and reclaiming the throne. Throughout this story, the filmmakers worked hard to explore and bring forth complex and grounded emotions and themes through their narrative, through unprecedented, powerful moments and actions in a Walt Disney animated feature. They brought forth a story where we witness characters confront death, deal with grief, rise to power, accept the past, and confront their greatest fears. And these moments exist in different forms throughout all of the world by every generation. And the creators did so in an unfamiliar location for film and a species that was recognizable that had existed on the planet for thousands of years. With this combination of universal experiences within a setting that held no connection to any historical time because of the absence of mankind, The Lion King was able to be developed to be a timeless tale. No one knew how big animation or The Lion King could be. The filmmakers simply began to work hard to make sure their film was worth telling, and one of the ways they did that was by removing most traces of humans in the film, even though they very much exist in reality, and there existed a precedent to include people in these animated films. From Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa's knowledge and experiences with mankind, I think in the Lion King world, far past the Pride Lands and the Outlands, humans lived their lives in some fairly modern way. But during the events of The Lion King, creators did not want us focusing on how lions and humans are connected or the impact of humans on the world. So they made the Pride Lands a sanctuary far removed from civilization. And they did that so the audience could instead focus on the universal themes that reside in Simba's journey. But now it's time to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with my ideas on why humans aren't in The Lion King? And do you think humans exist at all in The Lion King world? These have been questions I've been getting asked ever since I started to make Lion King videos. So I was ecstatic I could make this video for all of you who have been curious about this idea. 
Let me know what you think about these questions in the comments, along with any other ideas you have for future Discovering Disney episodes. And to see more Lion King videos like this one, you can find a link to that playlist in the description. If you'd like to continue to see more magical discussions like this one, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and the beautiful bell if you're new, and be sure to follow me on Instagram at Watso Videos. Thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon who are amazing supporters of my videos. And as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.